The golden ratiba is also called the golden mean or golden section. Other names include extreme and mean ratiba, medial section, divine proportion, divine section. In Latin, sectio divine, golden proportion, golden card, and golden number. Some 20th century artists and architects, including Le Corbusier and Dali, have proportioned their works to approximate the golden ratio, especially in the form of the golden rectangle in which the ratio of the longer side to the shorter is the golden ratio. Leaving this proportion to be aesthetically pleasing, the golden ratio appears in some patterns in nature, including the spiral arrangement of leaves and other plant parts. <clears throat> Mathematicians since Iclid have studied the properties of the golden ratio, including its appearance in the dimensions of a regular pentagon and in a golden rectangle, which may be cut into a square and a smaller rectangle with the same aspect ratio. The golden ratio has also been used to analyze the proportions of natural objects as well as man-made systems such as financial markets in some cases based on the views fits to data mathematics and art the golden ratio has been claimed to have had a special fas fascination for at least 2400 years though without reliable evidence according to Mario Livio some of the greatest mathematical minds of all ages from Pythagoras and Euclid in ancient Greece, through the medieval Italian mathematician Leonardo of Pisa and the Renaissance astronomer Johannes Kepler to present the scientific figures such as Oxford physicist Robert Penrose have spent endless hours over this simple ratio and its properties, but the Fascinating, fascination with the golden ratio is not confined just to mathematicians, biologists, artists, musicians, historians, architects, psycho psychologists, and even mystics have pondered and debated the basis of its 
ubiquity and uh, appeal. In fact, it is probably fair to say that the golden ratio has inspired thinkers of all disciplines like no other number in the history of mathematics. Ancient Greek mathematicians first studied what we now call the golden ratio because of its frequent appearance in geometry. The division of a line into extreme and mean ratio, the golden section, is important in the geometry of regular pentagrams and pentagons. Euclid's elements, Greek, Uh, Atopsia provides the first known written definition of what is now called the golden ratio. A straight line is said to have been cut in extreme and mean ratio. And as the whole line is to the greater segment, so is the greater to the lesser. Euclid explains a uh, construction for cutting section and line in extreme and mean ratio. For example, the golden ratio. Throughout the elements, several positions, there the runs the runs in modern terminology and their proofs employ the golden ratio. The golden ratio is explored in Luca Pachelot's um, book. The golden ratio is explored in Luca Pachelot's book, The Divine Proportion of 1509. The first one approximation of the inverse golden ratio by a decimal fraction stated as about 0.618 was written in 1597 by Michel Mestlin of the universe of Tübingen in a letter to his former student Jonas Kepler. Since the 20th century, the golden ratio has been represented by the Greek le letter phi. After Phidias, a sculptor was said to have employed it, or less commonly, by Tau, the first letter of the ancient Greek root meaning cut. Timeline according to Priya Hemingway. Phidias 490 BC made the Parthenon statue that seems to embody the golden ratio. Plato 427 347 BC. In his Timaeus describes five possible regular solids, the platonic solids, the tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron, some of which are related to the golden ratio. <coughs> Eclipse. 325 
265 BC in his elements gave the first recorded definition of the golden ratio which he called as translated into English extreme and mean ratio Greek <coughs> Fibinocchi 1170-1250 mentioned the numerical series now named after him in his library apogee the ratio of sequential elements of the Fibinocchi sequence approaches the golden ratio asymptot asymptotically Luca Pagili Pagioli, 1445 1570 defines the golden ratio as the divine proportion in his divine proportion. Michel Maestlin, 1550-1631, publishes the first known approximation, approximation of the inverse golden ratio as a decimal fraction. John Skipper, John Skipper, 1571, 1630, <coughs> proves that the golden ratio is the limit of the ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers and describes the golden ratio as a precious jewel. John Kepler, 1571-1630, proves that the golden ratio is the limit of the ratio of consecutive Fibonacci numbers and describes the golden ratio as a precious jewel. Geometry has two great treasures. One is the theorem of Pythagoras and the other the division of a line into extreme and mean ratio. The first we may compare to a measure of gold, the second we may name a precious jewel. These two treasures are combined in the Kepler triangle. Charles Bonnet 1820-1720-1793 points out that in the spiral glotaxis of plants going clockwise and counterclockwise were frequently two successive Fibinocchi series. <coughs> Martin Ohm 1792-1872 is believed to be the first to use the term goldener schnitt, golden section, that described his ratio in 1835. Edward Lucas 1842-1891 gives the numerical sequence now known as the Fibonacci sequence its present name. Mark Barr 20th century suggests the Greek letter Phi, the initial letter of Greek sculpture Phidias. Excuse me. <coughs> Mark Barr, 20th century suggests the Greek letter Phi, the initial letter of Greek sculptor Phidias name as a symbol for the golden ratio. Roger Penrose, 1931, discovered in 1974 the Penrose tiling, a pattern that is related to the golden ratio, both in the ratio of areas of its two from big tiles and in their relative frequency within the pattern. This is turned net to new discoveries about Quasi, uh, quasi crystals, quasi crystals. Mm. 
history of aesthetics p 20th century and mathematics and art the divine proportion a three volume work by Luca, uh, Luca Pagioli Luca Pagioli was published in 1509 pa Pagioli uh, Franciscan friar was known mostly as a mathematician but he was also trained and mainly interested in art the divine proportion explored the mathematics of the golden ratio so it's often said that Pagioli advocated the golden ratio's application to yield pleasing harmonious proportions Olivia points out that the interpretation has been traced to an error in 1799 and that Pagioli actually advocated the Vitruvian system of rational proportions. Pagioli also saw Catholic religious significance in the ratio, which led to his work's title, The Divine Proportions, contains illustrations of regular solids by Leonardo da Vinci. Pagioli's longtime friend and collaborator Mathematics and Architecture The Parthenon's facade as well as elements of its facade and elsewhere are said by some to be circumscribed by golden rectangles. Other scholars deny that the Greeks had any aesthetic association with golden ratio. For example, Midhad Gazel says it was not until Euclid, however, that the golden ratio's mathematical properties were studied. In the elements 300, 308, 308 BC, 308 BC, the Greek mathematician merely regarded that number as an interesting irrational number in connection with the middle and extreme radius. Its occurrence in regular pentagons and decagons was duly observed as well as in the dodecahedron, a regular polyhedron whose 12 faces are regular pentagons. It is indeed exemplary that the great Euclid, contrary to generations of mystics who followed, would soberly treat that number for what it is, without attaching, without attaching to it other than its factual properties. And Kate Devlin says, certainly the oft repeated assertion that the Parthenon and Parthenon in Athens is based on the golden ratio is not supported by actual measurements. In fact, the entire story about the Greeks and golden ratio seems to be without foundation. The one thing we knew for sure is that Euclid, <clears throat> in his famous textbook Elements, written around 300 BC, showed how to calculate its value. Later sources like Vitruvius exclusively discuss proportions that can be expressed in whole numbers, for example, commensurate as opposed to rational proportions. A 2004 geometrical analysis of earlier research into the Great Mosque of Chiron reveals a consistent application of the golden ratio throughout the design according to Bosora and um, 
muzzles. They formed ratios close to the golden ratio in the overall proportion of the plum and in the dimension of the prayer space. The chord and the minaret. The authors note, however, that the areas where ratios close to the golden ratio were found are not part of the original construction and theorize that these elements were added in a reconstruction. The Swiss architect Le Corbusier, famous for his contributions to the modern interventional style, <coughs> international. <coughs> the Swiss architect Le Corbusier, famous for his contributions to the modern international style, centered his design philosophy on systems of harmony and proportion. Le Corbusier's faith in the mathematical order of the universe was closely bound to the golden ratio and the Fibonacci series, which he described as rhythms apparent, rhythms apparent to the eye and clear in, the, in their relations with one another. And these rhythms are at the very root of human activities. They resound in men, they, they resound in man by an organic inevitability. In in inevitability, the same fine inevitab inevitability which causes the tracing out of the golden section by children, old, old men, savages and the uh, learned. Le Corbusier explicitly, sorry. <clears throat> Le Corbusier explicitly used the golden ratio as his modular system for the scale of architectural proportion. He saw this system as a continuation of the long tradition of Vitruvius, Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian man the work of Leon Battista Alberti and others who used the proportions of the human body to improve the appearance and function of architecture. In addition to the golden ratio, Le Corbusier based the system on human measurement, Fibonacci numbers and the double unit. He took suggestion of the golden ratio in human proportions. To an extreme. He sectioned his model human bodies eight at the navel with the two sections in golden ratio, then subdivided those sections in golden ratio at the knees and throat. Le Corbusier explicitly used the golden ratio in his modular system for the scale of architectural proportion. He saw this system as a continuation of the long tradition of Vitruvius, Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian man, the work of Leon Battista Alberti and others who used the proportions of the human body to improve the appearance and the function of architecture. In addition to the golden ratio, Le Corbusier based the system on human measurement, Fibonacci numbers, and the double unit. He took suggestion of the golden ratio in human proportions to an extreme. He sectioned his model human body's height at the 
navel with the two sections in golden ratio then subdivide those sections in golden ratio at the knees and throat. He used these golden ratio proportions in the modular system. The Corbusier's 1927 Villa Stein in Garches exemplified the modular system's application. The villa's rectangular ground plan, elevation and inner structure closely approximate golden rectangles. Another Swiss architect, Mario Botta, bases many of his designs on geometric figures. Several private houses he designed in Switzerland are composed of squares and circles, cubes and cylinders. In a house he designed in Origlio, the golden radio is the proportion between the central section and the side sections of the house. In a recent book, author Jason Elliott speculated that the golden ratio was used by the designers of the Naqsh Jahan Square and the adjacent Lotfollah Mosque. The 16th century philosopher Henry Agrippa drew a man over a pentagram inside a circle, implying a relationship to the golden ratio. Leonardo da Vinci's illustrations of the polyhedra in the divine proportion on the divine proportion, and his views that some bodily proportions exhibit the golden ratio, have led some scholars to speculate that the, that he incorporated the golden ratio in his paintings but the suggestion that his Mona Lisa for example employs golden ratio proportions is not supported by anything in Leonardo's own writings. Similarly although the Vitruvian man is often shown his connection with the golden ratio the proportions of the figure don't actually match it and the text only mentions whole number ratios. Salvador Dali, influenced by the works of Matilda Gica, explicitly used the golden ratio in his masterpiece, The Sacrament of the Last Supper. The dimensions of the canvas are a golden rectangle. A huge dodeke, dodekehedron, dodekehedron in perspective so that edges appear in golden ratio to one another is suspended above and behind Jesus and dominates the composition. Mondrian has been said to have used the golden section extensively in his geometrical paintings, though other experts including Critic uh, you Alain Boyce have disputed this claim. A static, <clears throat> statistical study on 565 works of art of different Greek painters performed in 1999 found that these artists had not used the golden ratio in the size of their canvases. The study concluded that the average ratio of the two sides of the paintings studied in the study is 1.34, with averages for individual artists ranging from 1.04 Goya to 1.46 Bellini. On the other hand, Pablo Tosco listed over 350 works by well-known artists, including more than 100, which have canvases with golden rectangle and root 5 proportions and other with proportions like root 2, 3, 4 and 6. So you're about to 
watch this video. According to John Tichold, Tichold, there was a time when deviations from the truly beautiful page proportions 2, 3, 1, 3 and the golden section were rare many books produced between 1550 and 1770 show these proper, proper proportions exactly to within half a millimeter. <clears throat> Some resources claim that the golden reality is commonly used in everyday design, for example, in the shapes of postcards, plane cards, posters, widescreen televisions, photographs, light switch, plays, and cars. Ern Lenvai analyzes Bella Bartok's works as being based on two opposing, opposing systems, that of the golden ratio and the acoustic scale. Acoustic scale. Though other music scholars reject that analysis, French composer Eric Satie used the golden ratio in several of his pieces, including Sonneries de la Rose, Crocs. The golden ratio is also apparent in the organization of the sections in the music of the basses reflex dance, lure, reflections in water from images, first series, 19 or 20, in which the sequence of kism is marked by marked out by the intervals. 34, 21, 13 and 8. And the main climax sits at the P position. The music musicologist Roy Howard has observed that the formal boundaries of Le Mer correspond exactly to the golden section. Trazice finds the intrinsic, <clears throat> intrinsic evidence remarkable but cautions that no written or reported evidence suggests that the Basi con consciously sought such proportions. Pearl drums positions the air bands on its master's premium models based on the golden ratio. The company claims that this arrangement improves bus response and has applied for a patent on, on this innovation. Though Hans Bohlen proposed the non-octave <clears throat> repeating 833 cent scale based on combination tones, the twinning features related relations based on the golden ratio. As a musical interval, the ratio 1.618 is uh, 833.090 cents. <clears throat> Patterns in nature. Adolf Zissing, whose main interests were mathematics and philosophy, found the golden ratio expressed in the arrangement of parts such as leaves and branches along the stems of plants and of veins and leaves 
he extended his research to the skeletons of animals and the branchings of their veins and nerves to the proportions of chemical compounds com <clears throat> he extended his research to the skeletons of animals and the branchings of their veins and nerves to the proportions of chemical compounds and the geometry of crystals even to the use of proportion in artistic and the endeavors in these patterns in nature he saw the golden ratio operating as a universal law in connection with his shame for golden ratio based human body proportions Zeising wrote in 1854 of a universal law in which as contained the grand principle of all formative striving for beauty and completeness in the realms of both nature and art and which permits as a promote promote and which permits as a promote spiritual ideal all structures forms and proportions whether cosmic or individual organic or inorganic acoustic or optical which finds its fullest realization however in the human form <clears throat> In 2010, the journal Science reported that the golden ratio is present at the atomic scale in the magnetic reso resonance of spins in cobalt neobate crystals. Since 1991, several researchers have proposed connections between the golden ratio and human genome DNA. However, some have argued that many apparent manifestations of the golden ratio in nature, especially especially in regard to animal dimensions, are fictitious optimizations. The golden ratio is key to the golden section search. Studies by psychologists starting with Fechner um, have been devised to test the idea that the golden ratio plays a role in a role in human perception of beauty while Fanchner found a preference for rectangle ratio centered on the golden ratio later attempts to carefully test such a hypothesis have been at best con conclusive <clears throat> Rationality. <clears throat> Mathematics and golden ratio. Rationality. The golden ratio is a rational number.
the number. <clears throat> Golden ratio number turns up frequently in geometry, particularly in figures with pentagonal symmetry. The length of a regular pentagon's diagonal is Golden ratio The number of phi turns up frequently in geometry, particularly in figures with pentagonal symmetry. The length of a regular pentagon's diagonal is phi times its side. The vert <coughs> vert side of a regular icosahedron are those of three mutually orthogonal golden re rectangles. There is no known general algorithm to arrange a given number of nodes even the on a sphere. For any of several definitions of even distribution, see Thompson problem. However, a useful approximation results from dividing the sphere into parallel bands of equal surface area and placing one node each other uh -huh, band in each band at longitude spaced by a golden section of the circle. regular pentagon the ratio between a side and a diagonal is phi while in intersecting a diagonal section each other in the golden ratio Odom's construction George Odom has given a remarkably simple construction for phi involving an equilateral triangle if an equilateral triangle is inscribed in a circle and a line segment joining the midpoints of two sides is produced to intersect intersect the circle in either of two points then these three points are in golden proportions this result is a straightforward consequence of the intersecting chord theorem theorem and can be used to construct a regular pentagon, a construction that uh, 
attracted the attention of the noted Canadian geometer Coxeter, who published it in Adam's name as a di diagram in the American Mathematical Monthly, accompany accompanied, accompanied by the single word Behold. Pentagram. <clears throat> The golden ratio plays an um, important role in the geometry of pentagrams. <clears throat> Each intersection of edges, sections, other edges in the golden ratio, also the radio, ratio of the length of the shorter segment to, to the segment bounded by the two intersecting edges, a side of the pentagon in the pentagram center is phi, as the four color illustration shows. The pentagram includes ten isosceles and isosceles isosceles triangles isosceles triangles five acute and five obtuse isosceles triangles in all of them. The ratio of the longer side to the shorter side is phi. The acute triangles are golden triangles. The obtuse isosceles triangles are golden gnomons. The mathematics of the golden ratio and of the Fibonacci sequence are intimately interconnected. even in symmetries and other properties. Golden ratio is everything. A pyramid in which the apothem slant height along the bisector of a face is equal to phi times the semi basis half the base with is something called a golden pyramid. The isosceles triangle that is the face of such a pyramid can be constructed from the two halves of a diagonally split golden rectangle of size semi base by apothem joining the medium lens edges to make the apothem <clears throat> Amelia would like to know if I could change anything what would it be I think I would add an <clears throat> Egyptian premise <clears throat> in the mid 19th century Robert studied various Egyptian pyramids including Khafre Egyptian pyramids very close in proportion to these mathematical pyramids are known. In the mid 19th century, Robert studied various Egyptian pyramids, including Khafre, Menkur, uh, and some of the Giza, Saqqara, and Abusir groups, and was 
interpreted as saying that half the base of the side of the pyramid is the middle mean of the side, forming what other authors identified as the Kepler triangle. Many other mathematical theories of the shape of the pyramids have also been explored. In the late 19th century, Robert studied various Egyptian pyramids, including Khafre, Menkure, and some of the Giza, Saqqara, and Abusir groups, and was interpreted as saying that half the base of the side of the pyramid is the middle mean of the side, forming what other authors identified as the Kepler triangle. Many other mathematical theories of the shape of the pyramids have also been explored. One Egyptian pyramid is remarkably close to a golden pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza, also known as the Pyramid of Cheops or Khufu. <clears throat> its slope of 51-52 is extremely close to the golden pyramid inclination pyramid inclination <clears throat> inclination <clears throat> its slope of 51-52 is extremely close to the golden pyramid inclination of 50 one and the uh, pi based pyramid inclina uh, inclination of 51 other pyramids at Giza Chepren Chepren 52 20 and Michrenos 50 47 are also quite close whether the relationship to the golden ratio in this pyramid is by design or by accident remains open to speculation. Several other Egyptian pyramids are very close to the rational 3-4-5 shape. Adding fuel to controversy over the architectural authorship of the Great Pyramid, Eric Templebell mathematician and historian claimed in 1950 that Egyptian mathematics wouldn't have supported by ability to calculate the slant height of the pyramids or the ratio to the height except in the case of the 345 pyramid since the 345 triangle was the only right triangle known to Egyptians and they didn't know the Pythagorean, Pythagorean theorem or nor any way to reason about irrational such as pi or phi. Michel Rice asserts that principal authorities on the history of Egyptian architecture have argued that the Egyptians were well acquainted with the golden ratio that it is that it is part of mathematics of the pyramid, citing Gio and Gio, Gioden, 1957, historians of science have always debated whether the Egyptians had any such knowledge or not, contending rather that it is apparent in an Egyptian building is the result of chance. In 
pyramidologist John Taylor claimed that in the Great Pyramid of Giza, the golden ratio is represented by the ratio of the length of the face, the slope head, inclined and an angle to the ground to half the length of the side of the square base equivalent to the second of the angle phi the above two lengths were about 186.4 and 115.2 meters respectively the ratio of these lengths is the golden ratio equate to more digits than either of the original measurements. Similarly, Howard Wise, according to Matilda Gaik, reported the Great <coughs> Pyramid Height 148.2 meter and half base 116.4 yield in 1.6 1.6189 for the ratio of slant height of half base again more accurate than the data variability examples of disputed observations of the golden ratio include the following Historian John Manns stated that the pages of the Gutenberg Bible were based on the golden section shape. However, according to Manns' own measurements, the ratio of height uh, to width was 1.45. Some specific proportions in the bodies of many animals, including humans, and parts of the shells of mollusks are often claimed to be in the golden ratio. There is a large variation in the real measures of these elements in specific individuals. However, and the proportion in question is often significantly different from the golden ratio. The ratio of successive phalan <coughs> phalangeal bones of the digits and the metacarpal bone has been said to approximate the golden ratio. The nautilus shell, the construction of which proceeds in a logarithmic spiral is often cited, usually with the idea that any logarithmic spiral is related to the golden ratio, but sometimes it, with the claim that each new chamber is proportioned by the golden ratio relative to the previous one. However, measurements of nautilus shells don't support this claim. <clears throat> and invest in some pra practitioners and invest in some practitioners of technical analysis use the golden ratio to indicate support over price level or resistance to price increase over stock or commodity after significant price changes up or down, new support and re uh, resistance levels are supposedly found at or near prices related to the starting price via the golden ratio. The use of the golden ratio in investing is also related to more complicated patterns described by Fibonacci numbers. For example, Elliott Way principles and Fibonacci ret uh, retracement. However, other market analysts have published analyses suggesting that these percentages and patterns are not supported by the data.
In mathematics, a rational number is a real number that cannot be expressed as a ratio of integers, for example, as a fraction. Therefore, rational numbers, when written as the decimal numbers, don't terminate, nor do they repeat. For example, the number pi, the number pi, starts with 3.141, 592, 653, 589, 79. But no infinite number of digits can represent it exactly. And it doesn't end in a segment that repeats itself infinitely often. The same can be said for an irrational number. As a consequence of Cantor's proof that the real numbers are uncountable and the rationals countable, it follows that almost all real numbers are irrational. When the ratio of lengths of two line segments is irrational, the line segments are also described as being common incommensurable incommensurable meaning they share no measure in common numbers which are irrational include include the radio the radio fee including the numbers number which are irrational include uh, Radio pi over circle circumference to its diameter. Euler's number E, the golden ratio, the golden ratio phi, and the square root of 2. In fact, all square, all square roots of natural numbers other than a perfect squares are rational. Ancient Greece, the first proof of the existence of rational numbers is usually attributed to a Pythagorean, possibly Hippasasus, of Metapontum, who probably discovered them while identifying sides of the pentagram, the then current Pythagorean method would have claimed that there must be some sufficiently small indivisible unit that could fit evenly evenly into one of these lengths as well as the other. However, Hippasosus in the 5th century BC was able to deduce that there was in fact no common unit of measure and that the assertion of such an existence was in fact a contradiction. He did this by demonstrating that if the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle was indeed commensurable with a leg, then that unit of measure must be both odd and even, which is impossible. His reasoning is as follows. Start with an isosceles right triangle with side lengths of integers a, b, and c. The ratio of the hypotenuse to a leg is represented by c, b. Assume a, b, and c are in the smallest possible terms. For example, they have no common factors. By the Pitha Pythagorean the theorem, C 
cube equal a cube plus b cube equal b cube plus b cube equal to b cube. Since the triangle is isosceles, a equal b. Since c cube equal to b cube, c cube is divisible by two, and therefore even since c cube is even, c must be even. Since c and b have no common factors and c is even, b must be odd. If b were even, b and c would have a common factor of two. Since is since c is even, dividing c by two yield an integer. And let y be this integer. C equal to y. Greek mathematicians termed this ratio since b cube is even, b must be even. Since uh, is ten. However, we have already asserted that b must be odd and b cannot be both odd and even. This contradiction proves that c and b cannot both be inte integers and thus the existence of a number that cannot be expressed as a ratio of two int integers. Greek mathematicians termed this ratio of incommensurable magnitudes allogos or inexpressible hypothesis, however, was not allowed for his effort. According to one legend, he made his discovery while out at sea and was subsequently thrown overboard by, by his fellow Pythagoreans for having produced an element in the universe which denied the doctrine that all phenomena in the universe can be reduced to whole numbers and their produce. Thank you very much. See you there.